So the apocalypse is finally upon us, where Master Duel now consists of only two decks. Tier, and decks trying to counter Tier, then inevitably failing, when they don't draw D-Shifter. And I'm here to add another deck to that pile of copium. A deck that is designed to summon out one of Tier's hardest counters. A seal. So here's today's deck list. Now just a reminder before I get into the deck list, if you're enjoying today's video or seeing more content just like this in the future, especially if you're a returning viewer, as apparently about 50% of people watching this or even subscribe to the channel, nearly all of you returning viewers who have seen my content before. So you find yourself keep coming back to the channel or see more content just like this in the future, remember to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel down below. Also I have a whole bunch of other videos playing this week, including a Chaos Tier Element build and a deck designed to purely counter Tier Element, so if you're interested in that kind of content, remember to like, subscribe, and let's get into this deck list. List. So the first thing you might notice about this deck list is that it's currently missing three cards. That's because there's essentially two different ways to build this deck list, and I want to show them both to you to give you the option of just choosing which one you prefer. Because there's the more competitive way to play the deck, and there's the sort of Australian way to play the deck. And well, since I'm Australian, it would be probably a cardinal sin if I didn't show you that method. So essentially, we'll start off with the more competitive way. So essentially, Sprite is only really playing Melfi's in a more competitive sense, because these two cards by themselves will just give you a copy of Herald of Arclight on the field during your opponent's turn, which against Tealament is a fantastic card, as it's not only an Omni Negate, but also comes with a fantastic floodgate of any monster sent from the hand or main deck to the graveyard is just flat out banished instead, which against the decklist that's trying to mill a whole bunch, this is just a complete and utter counter to it. So basically, you just need these two cards and you'll have a competitive variant of this deck list without anything else. So these final slots can just be things like hand traps or things like your triple tactics or I don't know, Harpy's Feather Dust or whatever you feel like. You don't actually need any other Melfi cards in here. But if you want to play a more Australian variant, that's where the other parts come in. So to play the Australian variant, you're going to need a copy of Kalantosa, a copy of Puppy, and a copy of your Wally as well. Because the difference between this variant and the other variant is basically you're going to be able to summon out more stuff, but you're going to do it slower, which can be very impactful in a tier format because a lot of the time your opponent's going to be instantly milling their deck list, and if they're instantly milling the deck list before you have this out, obviously they're going to get off all their card effects and you might have been a bit too slow to the play. But if you are not so scared of that and you're easily able to set up a few negates beforehand or have hand traps in hand that sort of deal with the early pressure, then you can still go into this, but you can also use Wally's effect to summon out an extra monster as well. So that's basically the two differences. You'll sort of see what I mean when I get into the gameplay, but basically I think the previous variant is the more competitive way, but this in my opinion is the more fun way, especially if you want to play some of the new cards like Melfi Wally. So the strategy for this deck list is quite simple. You just do your standard sprite stuff, which you guys have all seen before, so we won't run through it now. But essentially, as part of that strategy, you're going to summon out two level 2 monsters and use them to go into a copy of your Melfi of the Forest at some point during your turn. With this card, which just takes two level 2 monsters, you just detach any material and search for any Melfi monster straight from your deck list, which, depending on the variant you're playing, will either be a Melfi Wally or a copy of Melfi Catty. In this case, we're going to talk about Wally. So Wally is a card that basically if your opponent ever normal summons or special summons a monster, you can return this card to your hand, and in doing so, summon out two Melfies from your deck. This would be a copy of your Melfi Puppy, and a copy of Melfi Catty. And then again, if your opponent ever summons another monster, so on their second summon for the turn, these two cards will return to your hand, and one of them, your Puppy, will summon out a copy of Kalantosa from the deck list, which just pops a card in the field, and then your Melfi Catty searches for a copy of your Melfi Pinny. Melfi Pity in hand can then be used as a quick effect to synchro summon straight into a copy of your Herald of Arclight, and then you have your nice little floodgate on the field, which your opponent will have a lot of trouble dealing with. And that's essentially it. It's just a nice little tech you can stuff into any of your sprite deck lists that will help you in the tournament matchup. The rest of the deck list is just standard sprite stuff. Obviously we're playing a lot more sort of tier counter sort of hand traps which you might not have seen before, things like your DD Crow and playing my Dimensional Shifter as well, which is slang a lot of people don't realise can be sort of played in Sprite, as although it does have some negative synergy with your Sprite Elf of course, 
it doesn't really impact the game too much compared to if you just activate this and your opponent can't play the game at all. Because this necklace can still play quite fine without your sprite elf's effect. It's basically the same as if your sprite elf got hit by an imperm or something. Your deck will still play, it'll just be sort of slightly worse end boards, sort of. And I will take slightly worse end boards any day over your opponent literally can't play the game since this is literally going to be a game saver in any of the tier limit matchups, which are going to be basically over 50% of your games on ladder, so that's why I'm playing this. As the rest of the deck, it's all pretty standard stuff, you've all seen it before, so without further ado, let's get into some gameplay. So today I have three replays to show you guys, two of which are going to be actually Melfi gameplay, and the third one was just sort of a uh, funny replay that occurred that I wanted to show you anyway, just because it was just kind of silly, so I decided to keep it. <laughs> Alright, let's get into the replays. So this first one was against Admancipator, I believe. Not even playing, uh, probably not even playing Tillamont. Or who knows, maybe he stuffed a few in there anyway. <laughs> Either way, he was playing a nice little graveyard deck list, which is something that, uh, this deck list can sort of eat up if it goes first. That 60 card deck probably has grass in there. Alright, using our Sprite starter, going to our standard Sprite stuff, you know how it works. So making, making sure to summon the Negate first, so if I opponent had a Hand Trap, he can't use it. By the way, ignore this Triple Tactics talent, by the way. I literally had this in here over Dimensional Shifter at the start before I realized I just want to play D-Shifter. Because I think the next game after this, I lost to a tier player because I drew Triple Tactics talent rather than drawing that Shifter. So yeah, just pretend this is a Shifter. <laughs> Alright, so doing standard Sprite stuff, not even gonna bother commentating this, you guys have all seen it before. But at some point, I'm gonna summon out a Melfi of the Forest. Now, Melfi of the Forest actually has two effects. It has its Search effect, which you're about to see right now, and its second effect is, basically, if one of your Melfi monsters returns to hand, you can actually target one of your opponent's monsters and negate their effect. But generally, that effect is... It's a little bit slow, like it can't be used to sort of negate stuff in response to stuff, so it's generally a pretty worthless negate. So if you can get this thing off the board to go into something like an IP Masquerina, which is something I think I do in this duel, you certainly should do that, as it doesn't really do a whole lot. At least in my opinion. Alright, turning for my Wally. I'm gonna summon a card to the field. And yeah, these two just become an IP Masquerina. And then during the end phase, that's when your Worldly's effect activates to summon itself to the field. Alright. So we've got a negate on field, we have a special summon negate if we want it from the Sprite Elf, and of course we have your IP Masquerina. Which, by the way, IP Masquerina is needed in this deck. So a lot of Sprite variants you don't actually technically need it, but in this one it's needed. Also along with a copy of your Crusader Avramax. They're 100% needed in this deck list, and you're about to see why. Alright. This opponent's gonna do a whole bunch of punk stuff. Don't care too much, just gonna summon out my negate, ready for later. Alright. Summons out his dude. I'm gonna use my Wally's effect, swap it over, bring out my two dudes. Summons his second dude, and as, as he does so, I can now activate the effects of both of these to return them to hand, and activate their effects. Alright, summoning out my Kantosa, adding this to hand to get my Pipe Penny. This now allows me to pop a monster on the field. I choose this monster because I'm an absolute moron and forget this is going to bring something back for doing so. I don't know why I wouldn't kill this anyway, since this is probably the more prominent one, since it makes rank 4s and stuff, but I'm just dumb. But then I use my Penny's effect, which is the more important one anyway. Taking one of my cute little dudes in hand, and summoning out a copy of... Herald of the Arclight. And from here, my opponent's in a hell of a lot of danger, because Adamantipator needs its graveyard. Now, at this point, my opponent's about to try to go into the battle phase. He activates his thing to, or pretends to go into the battle phase to get, obviously, to try to swing into my Herald to remove it, so I lose my Negate and I lose my Floodgates. So, the way to stop this from happening is you use your IP Masquerina to go into a copy of... Your Avramax. Because Avramax, let you guys know, is insanely hard to get rid of, as it's not targetable and it's immune to destruction. And on top of that, it also has a nice little effect at the top, which a lot of people miss, which basically says, where is it? Also, their monsters cannot target monsters for attacks, except this one. So this completely protects your Floodgate from having your opponent just go to battle phase and swing over the 1000 defense, because they can't swing into it, your Avramax is just going to protect it. So in this case, opponent tries to go battle phase, realizes he actually can't swing into it, and just concedes. And this happens a lot, because that's basically what a lot of people think they're going to do to out it, and they don't realise Avramax has that, has that bonus effect. Alright, 
So before we get to the fight on Belfie replay, we'll show off this sort of meme one first. Yes, this one was just my opponent doing something a little bit, uh... I, I don't know what was going on in this replay, so I just want to show it off. <laughs> this is a going second replay too. Alright, so we actually have a D-Shifter here. Opponent set some stuff, I'm like, oh no, it's gonna be some sort of Floodgate deck, no please. So we're gonna start off by going to my standard sort of sprite stuff. Max Seed, which is a bit annoying, so... Now we're a bit scared, but thankfully, my opponent reveals what he's playing instantly. Dino Morphia. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a D-Shifter player right here. Because this deck loves to use its graveyard recursion. And first thing he summons out... It's a copy of Kendra Gita for some reason? I think he forgets that, uh, this card needs stuff in Graveyard to use its effects. I think he was trying to reuse this trap card. So I summon my dudes. He's gonna then activate his, uh, trap trick. Banish your copy of his soul? He just... This card is obviously the anti-spell card card, which I'm like, okay. Uh, uh, sure, I guess. Just nukes his life points further. He now has 2,000 life points. And I'm like, huh, you realize you have a 2,000 attack monster on the field, right? Like, you do you do realize that. So I'm like, yeah, I'll just play into Maxi, who cares? I'm just gonna summon out my Masquerainer. Use those two to go into a copy of my Gigantic, which now has 33, oh, 3,400, 3,200, whatever the hell it is. 3,200 attack, detach, summon, br summon blue. Blue searches for Jet. Summon Jet. From here, I can now actually get a summon out, let him summon out all these dudes if he wants to. And she can't even do that because he's... <laughs> he tried to use the trap card which needs to be on the, uh... Needs to be in the graveyard for its effect, but gets banished of course because of the, uh, D-Shifter. So he literally can't even use this in response to my starter. So my Cat Shark, double this thing's attack. And yeah, he's just very dead on field. So yeah, I don't really know why I say this replay, I just thought it was kind of amusing. <laughs> just an example of D-Shifter being good, I guess. And showing you that you can actually just play on a D-Shifter, you, your deck doesn't care. You literally don't need it. Alright, final replay. Alright. So this one was against actually T-Element. Now unfortunately this deck list, although I'm showing this sort of having some T-Element counters, I wouldn't count this deck list as a T-Element counter per se, purely because T-Element is tier 0, there's just no way to get around it, it's just going to be the best deck, so there's ways to make your matchups easier, but none of them are actually going to be like, holy shit, this is just better than tier, it just isn't really going to happen, so. This is a good way to sort of play Sprite if you want to still play it, but if you're looking for the best deck in the game, that's still going to be tier. So I don't want to falsely advertise this deck list too much. Alright, even with playing things like DD Crow and D-Shifter and stuff. Alright, this is actually an insane hand, we've got like everything. Even got the Toad stuff. Because if you actually already used all your search stuff for Sprite, you can just search out Toad. If you can search out to Toad, that's just a bunch more summons you can do. Alright, Sprite Elf, bring back the Toad. Toad sends another Toad. You know the deal. Going for an XC summon into Melfi of the Forest. Detaching. Searching. By the way, if you're playing the other variant, and you're, the other variant of um this deck, you'll just search for your cat here. It's pretty simple. Your cat will just summon at the end of the turn, and then it just requires your opponent to do one normal summon to get out your Synchro. Whereas this variant requires two summons to do so, as you'll see. Alright. So here, it actually looks like I've clogged my field, because your Wally actually needs two slots to summon the Melfis too. But that's sort of actually a bait. This deck list doesn't actually get clogged very easily, because if my opponent ever summons a monster, I can activate my Wally's effect to return it to hand, and then at the same time, chain another effect such as my Sprite Smashes, or chain my Masquerina, or tra chain my whatever negates, I, you wouldn't chain that to this, but chain, I don't know, something to this, they'll just clear your field a little bit, and that'll mean you'll have your two slots left to summon out your two Melfies. So you can just chain in response to, yeah, basically your IP Masquerina or your Smashes here. Alright. Brent's going to activate his fusion, I'm going to use my smashes. I actually forgot to do the chain thing here, so despite me talking about it, I don't even bother doing it here. But you'll see it does actually clear up my field, so I have the two slots left. 
So this is the same as if my opponent activated a monster effect first, I need to negate, and I clear the slot that way. Same sort of thing here. But yeah, I could have changed the, um, could have ch used this, then changed the smashes. Alright, summons out his Rikolos. In response, I'm now going to swap out my Melfi Wally for the two dudes. He tries to use this to negate it. We're not going to let that happen, of course. Then we're also going to use our DD Crow to banish his fusion monster, or his monster trying to fuse. Because although you don't negate its effect, you banish it and it requires itself as part of the fusion material. So banishing it stops it fusing. Which is why everyone plays DD Crow in this format. Alright, activates instant fusion, summons another monster to the field. We now instantly use our, our Sprite Elf in response. No real reason to use it right now, just decided to. <laughs> summons out his Kit Close, and in doing so, he'll get to send a card to the graveyard. And this is what I mean, by the way, when it comes to sort of instant summoning, where if I was running the other variant of Sprite, I could have summoned this Sinker out before he'd used his Kit Close effect, so he wouldn't have got this mill effect. So it would have been quicker, so it's technically better, but. In this case, I'm able to swap these two, two guys out, get a search. And doing so, do it before he gets his mill effect from this card, which is more of the important effect anyway. Not going to worry about swapping over the puppy though, because this particular matchup, popping these cards doesn't do anything, because obviously there are... One of them wants to be popped, and the other one recycles itself when popped, I'm pretty sure. I guess I could have propped this card effect or something, I don't know. It didn't really matter too much. Hindsight I probably should have popped this one since it only has just it just recurs itself, right? It doesn't actually do anything on summon, I think. I don't know. Anyway. Either way, summoning out our uh, Herald of the Arc Light, and just like the first replay, the first thing my opponent tries to do is like, oh, thousand defense. Let's go to battle phase. So it easily just links summon out Mechanite Crusadia. Still decides to go into battle phase, not realizing and concedes, because he can't swing into it. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today's replays. Hope you guys enjoyed them. If you didn't leave a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I have some other videos planned later this week, including Chaos Tier Element, and a decklist designed to actually counter Tier Element. So, if you want to see that, maybe subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, hope to see you guys in the next one. Laters. Hey big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up Mokuba, I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.